Today we're going to be continuing our discussions about business in agriculture and talking about how to be a better salesman at farmer's market so you can increase your profits and sell more stuff. Let's get started. So you're looking to start selling at farmers markets and you're trying to sell and you see really long lines at other locations but you're really just not selling as much of your own stuff as much as you would like to well in this video that's what we're going to be talking about is how to be a better salesman to increase your sales to better make more money to make it more profitable and enjoyable so don't forget, if you like what we're doing, don't forget to subscribe, click on that like notification so that way we can do better in the YouTube algorithm and we can continue to bring more content like this for you guys so that we can better more continue to learn with each other. As we mentioned before, kind of like myself, when I first started selling at farmer's markets, there were really long lines at other locations that didn't seem to have as high of quality or they had just as high as quality, but everyone just seemed to walk on by my stand at the farmer's market and just completely ignored me. And I had to learn through hard knocks over time of things that I was doing, both good and bad, to better help sell my stuff at the produce. And that's one of the things that I want to do in talking about this video is shorten your learning curve so it's a little bit easier on you to increase your profit. The first number one thing that I would recommend to do at the farmer's markets is get people's attention. You can stand there, you can look pretty, you can have all your equipment set up, you can have a really nice stand of really good high quality looking product and people are just going to continue to walk on by. You'll get a few people that will stop, they'll look at your stuff, they'll ask you questions and then they'll just continue to walk on by and the vast majority of everyone else will continue to ignore you in favor of other people because they're long lines and they'll just assume they've got a lot better produce, honey, whatever it is that you're selling at the farmer's market. And so here's one thing that you can do. Back in olden times, you'd see the old fishmongers, fish for sale, fresh fish, and they would just yell at people in the markets walking by. Now, this is what I would recommend you do. It might get tedious, it might get boring, but that's what the first things that I did. I remember watching Aladdin, the old Disney movie, and you have the guy yelling, fresh fish, come get your fresh fish. Well, do that with your produce. Say, hey, come on over, come check out my honey. Hey, come check out my produce. I have some really good stuff. One of the things that I personally do is I actually sell microgreens as one of my main niche things. I'm actually the only microgreens grower in my area. And so that is not as common of a produce in my area that people are still getting used to. And so one of the things that I would say is, hey, come check out our sunflower shoots. And they look at me a little weird going, what, what is that? That's unique. And they would kind of walk on over and I would say, check this out, show them the microgreens, how unique the product is. And then they would be interested by it. And I could start to have a conversation, maybe five percent of people would actually purchase some in the time when I'm able to give up some samples they'll eat those as well but it significantly increased my foot traffic of people coming to my stand and then just like a magnet when there was one or two people stopping to check out my stand of produce then other people would start to line up because they assume oh there's a couple people here it must be something good interesting to look at so there would actually be a line that would start to form naturally on its own so i wouldn't have to yell as much now you don't necessarily have to yell at them or scream at them come look at my produce but at least holler out to people as they're walking by so that way you can actually pique their interest and show them that you are here as a person and that you do have product to sell. It might seem a little bit weird and simple, but it could be as simple as that of just, hey, come pay attention to me. Another thing that can really make a difference as part of being a great salesman is your personal presentation of what you do. They always say clothes make the man. Now, that's not always the case, but it does have a significant amount of truth to it. If you're going to a farmer's market where it's going to be a little bit more casual, there's a little bit more of a farmer setting where people have this envision of what a farmer at a farmer's market should look like, okay? What I like to call it is farmer chic. So when I go to farmer's markets, I'll wear one of my plaid shirts, I'll probably have a baseball cap, maybe a cowboy hat, 
or sometimes I even bring overalls. So they are nice, clean clothes, but they give that idea of, I'm a farmer and this is my setup. And by having those particular clothes, it actually helps to go towards that vision of what people are looking for, of what a farmer would be in a farmer's market. You are not going to be taken very seriously if you show up in a button-down three-piece tux like you're a sommelier at a Michelin star restaurant. You need to dress according to the environment that you're in. It's going to be get people's attention if you're in that tux, but it's going to be very off-peating and people are actually just not going to take you seriously if you are not dressed for that environment to which you're trying to be. So, make certain you're wearing proper clothing or attire in that. Same way, you don't want to overdress, but yet you also don't want to underdress. I've seen some people come to farmer's markets where there were some ladies that I'm not kidding when I'm saying they were selling in bikinis. They were trying to sell their produce at a bikini as an eye opener to say, hey, come look at me. Yes, they were getting attention, but they were not getting the right kind of attention. People would look at them in that bikini and you have a lot of open flesh. And so the vast majority of people, your serious customers that are looking to purchase a significant amount of produce, did not view that as sanitary. It's fine, honey. Yeah. But what about bacteria? And so you really need to dress for that environment. Another thing that I would recommend is as you're being that salesman and trying to have eye communication, talking to them, a lot of people, it's out summertime, there's gonna be sun, it's glaring, you want to wear sunglasses so that way you can more easily communicate. Never ever wear sunglasses. I know I've seen guys do it. I've seen some successful people do it. My personal mantra is never use sunglasses. They always say the eye of the soul is there. There's, I've actually done personal experience where sometimes I'm selling, I'm wearing sunglasses, sometimes I'm not, and you just don't get good eye communication with people and it makes it a little bit harder. So when you're yelling at people saying, hey, come buy my produce, hey, come check out my produce, it's really good high quality stuff, I've actually had people look at me and assume I'm talking to someone else because they can't see my eye contact. And then when I take those sunglasses off and I look directly at the person and I go, hey, you over there. Yes, I'm looking right at you, John Smith. I want you to come check out my wares that I'm selling. It's really high quality. And they will see that I am directly focused at them. And it helps to engage them by having that eye contact. The other item that I would recommend is having personal health having personal hygiene that will greatly encourage it. Now, I have seen some guys, you don't want to be that hipster guy that's wearing a full toga, that's got the guru beard down to his knees, hair everywhere, he's wearing sackcloth and kind of smock. I've actually seen guys show up in that in selling products where their feet are black because they are wear, walking around blacktop and it is just not a clean environment. They also have kind of a poor smell to them. And so I would say be groomed. If you're gonna wear facial hair, make certain that it's nice trimmed, have it a little bit longer, have a little bit shorter. I've seen some guys with beards down to their knees, but it's well chromed, they're using some beard oils, they are actually sometimes putting it in ties, they're sometimes braiding it, but they're combing their beard, they're dressing it up nicely. They are combing their hair. If you are a girl, I've seen it make certain to have your hair combed, maybe it's nice, you don't want it to get in your way, go ahead and throw on a ponytail, but make certain you present a well-dressed, well-groomed person that actually has guy good hygiene. I've noticed that that can be a problem. Now, in the case where you're harvesting your product that morning, if you're doing lettuces and vegetables, you get entirely dirty because you're out in the field. You're getting sweaty, you're getting smelly. Get out there early. Take an extra 10 minutes to go back to your base of operations, shower, get cleaned up, put on some deodorant, get rid of that funky smell. If you smell like pig pen, 
from the peanuts, you are not going to be presenting a good thing and it's going to be a turnoff from people. You need to have good hygiene because a lot of people will assume if this person has bad hygiene, then they're also going to have bad produce. They're going to have bad stuff that they're selling and they're not going to want to have anything to do with that. One other note about personal hygiene. Now I personally, in the hot summer, it gets really hot. Sometimes you're gonna sweat even after you've showered, you've taken care of those things, you've got deodorant to try and control the smell. It's hot, it's summer. S places where I live, it can get triple digits. So one of the things that I do is I actually keep a spare rag towel that's nice and clean. So when I'm not physically talking to customers or even if I'm in, talking to customers, I can take that towel, I can do a quick dab across my forehead and wipe off the excess sweat. People look at me and go, dude, are you okay? Get some water, like, you're having some struggles. Get the towel, it's part of hygiene, you're gonna sweat, it's okay, it's life. Take a little bit, wipe down your face, keep it nice and neat, so you don't look like you're melting in the middle of summer. Now, I know everyone doesn't have that issue, but if you do, it saves you a lot of grief from people, and you don't have sweat. It's really embarrassing if you're a really sweaty guy or girl and you're leaning over your produce saying, here, have some of this as you're handing out samples or you're trying to take cash and making some of those things and your sweat is literally dripping down onto your lettuce. It is not a good sign. So please figure out what you need to do for your personal hygiene, for your presentations, and just take those small extra steps to help improve your overall presentation. Now, as you're engaging people, as you're talking to them, saying, hey, come check out my produce, as you're encouraging them to come in, as you have good hygiene, all of these other factors combine together. You need to be physically engaged with the people standing at the farmer's market. So there's going to be busy times, there's going to be slow times, kind of like in a wave, just like everything else. What you can do is, it's going to be a long day. You're going to have eight, ten hours that you're physically at the farmer's market. It's going to be exhausting. At those times, you're going to want to sit down. You're going to want to lean your head. You're going to want to go to the back corner of your vendor's tent or whatever you've got set up and just relax. Don't do it. If you need to do it, trade off with your partner. Sit down on your chair, rest your feet for a few minutes, and relax. If you don't have that luxury though, sometimes I'm going by myself and I don't have a partner to help me out. I'm running my stand completely by myself. So what you can do is during those times when it's a little bit slower, sit down, relax, take a little bit of time. You're exhausted, you haven't eaten in four or five hours, grab a quick bite to eat out of a cooler that you've got on the side. Take a few bites, set it down. You don't need to be taking a full Thanksgiving meal. You are there to sell, you are there to make money. You are not there to relax, hang out in the shade, have a good time. There's going to be a little bit of discomfort. Now, is it necessary to always have discomfort? No. Do what you need to. Get some foam squishy mats, put it down, make it easier on your feet. Have a chair, sit down when you don't have any customers. Take a quick bite of a sandwich when you're not physically talking to people. There have been times when I've seen at farmer's markets, when I'm not exaggerating, when there's busy crowds where you have dozens, if not hundreds of people walking by and they are just sitting down. In my particular market, I don't know why, but there is a really nice gentleman. He focuses on selling beef, jerky, beef, really great high quality cuts of grass fed beef. We have four or five vendors all grass-fed beef that sell this. However, this particular guy does the worst. I don't know why, but he'll come, he'll set up his truck, he'll send all of his stuff up. He's got a freezer. He's got a really nice setup, displays, presenting all of his wares. He does not make sales. And the reason why is because he does not engage. He brings this really nice big four leg wood chair and he'll actually sit down in the chair and lean back up against the truck and he'll occasionally talk to people but he's in a very relaxed comfortable position occasionally when it's been really slow I've actually seen him tip his cowboy hat covering his eyes and he has started to snore so there's a period of an hour or more where he's sleeping and snoring I can hear him from across the walkway as I'm selling there is a large amount of people that are walking by that he is missing out on great opportunities. Rather than sleeping, rather than 
taking that time when it's busy, get up. Be at the front of your vendor post. Talk to people. Engage with people. Don't hide like Smeagol in the back of your tent. It seems simple and easy, but you'd be surprised how much standing up straight, having an air of confidence, even if you're feeling tired, have that towel, have a small little mug with some water to rehydrate yourself really quick. You know what? How about this? I'm talking to you. I'm working on it. Maybe I'm a vendor selling it. Well, I'll pull out my mug real quick. Take a quick drink. Hey, how you doing? Thanks. This is my produce. A quick rehydration method like that will significantly help to increase your dessert, your endurance and ability to make more money. Have that small sandwich. Those other small tips will significantly encourage you to make. Next thing that will highly increase your success as a salesman to make more money at a farmer's market is to be a salesman. What I mean by that is know your product, know the price, know the origins, know what produce you're doing, know what that particular product can be used for. Let's say that you have a unique product that is not as common. Let's say you are a seller of mushrooms. Well, have some ideas of ways that people can use those mushrooms. These mushrooms will be really great in making omelets. You can use this in making this particular dish. Have ideas of how the customer can use it. One of the things that I find useful in working with sunflower shoots is that it's not as common or a unique thing, and but it still has a really great crisp flavor to it. It is considered a niche product. So one of the things that I've done is I've looked for recipes. I've taken the time to say, you know what? These are some sandwiches you can make. These are some oriental dishes you can make. These are different recipes that you can do to help that out. I've actually gone as far as having a small booklet binder on my stand as well so people can flip through and look at recipes and go, wow, that is a really great idea so that I can use it in this dish. So that way they can start to form a game plan of how they can use and incorporate that product. You can have the best product in the world, but if the customer doesn't know how to use it because it's a niche product or they don't know how it can be incorporated into their current foods, then you're less likely to make less sales. So that's what I would encourage you is know how to use it, know how you grow it, and so that way you can much better do the sources of it. When people come up and talk to you, they're going to ask you questions. And some of them may seem really dumb and you're just like, why in the world are you even asking that? That is a stupid question. Now, one of the things that I mean by, what do I mean that? So there is a awesome vendor that's in my particular market that solely focuses on mushrooms. He has 12 different types of mushrooms that are really great quality and he's known as the mushroom guy. So he actually commonly has teenagers that walk up to him and be like, hey man, what's up? I wanna buy some shrooms. Can I get high off of it? <laughs> and he says, you know what? I actually don't have any shrooms. I do apologize about that, but these are just high quality mushrooms to help improve it. If you wanna do it, here's some recipes that you can go in. And he actually turns that around and shows how these mushrooms can be grown in those recipes. So he has a really great way of turning something that can be like, dude, I've heard the shroom joke 30 times in the last hour. And rather than getting frustrated with it, you can turn that around to improve it. So I've been talking a lot about other vendors. Why do I even care about what the other vendors are growing? Is it because I view them as competition, we sell the same thing and we're competing with each other because there's a finite amount of people, there's a finite amount of money? No, that's not it at all. I actually find for me to be a better salesman in a farmer's market environment is I actually get to know my fellow vendors. I become friends with them. Some of the vendors I've been selling at farmer's markets for years with, a lot of us, we've been going to these same farmer's markets for years. We've gotten to know each other. We've become friends. We've started to support each other. And we all have our own niche products that we sell. So for me, particularly with my beehives, with my microgreens and some of the other things I sell, those are my niche categories. There are some other guys that grow beef or lamb. There are some other guys that do more in your lettuces, leafy greens, some of your herbs. Different farmers, we each have different things that we can focus on. 
we'll commonly have customers walk up to us and say, hey, I'm looking for some basil. I'm looking for some rosemary. Well, look here. I've actually got a ton of rosemary that I'm getting ready to grow so I can put out in my field because I am a supplier of herbs. So commonly what we'll do is I will say, someone will contact me and say, hey, do you have basil? Do you have rosemary? And I say, well, yes, I do. Here it is. Come check it out. And then they go, well, what are some recipes? You seem to have ideas for other recipes. What is it that you can do? And I say, you know what? Uh, here's what you can do. If you get some of these nice herbs, one thing that I really recommend is go check out uh, Farmer John over there. He has some really great high quality strips of steak or other cuts of meat or have some really great lamb chops or pork chops, whatever that particular vendor has, I highly recommend it. I've actually had other guys send customers to me because they say, you know what? I've got some really great cuts of chicken thighs. Well, I'm looking for some herbs. What can I do to help improve my chicken to make it a little bit more tasty? And I want to try and buy local. They'll say, hey, go check out Yule Acres over there. They have some really great high quality herbs. They have some really great high quality honey. You can use those herbs and honey to make a really nice flavorful rub to complement this really high quality piece of meat. So you'll actually get referrals from other vendors and you can help each other out. That is why I highly recommend be friendly to the customers, be friendly to your other vendors and help to give each other recommendations. So that way you both can increase together rather than trying to compete against each other. And everyone will be able to make more money together. These are just a few of the ways that I personally have found to make me and other vendors around me to be much more successful salesmen or women, also to help increase my overall profits at farmers markets by selling more produce so that way I'm not taking it home. It's going to the customer making me more money. What are some of your thoughts? Did I miss something? Are there other ideas that you can think to help increase better tactics so that you can be a better salesperson? Let us know in the comments below. Click if you like what we're doing. Like I mentioned before, if you like what we're doing, subscribe, click on that ring and bell so that way you can continue to get information like this all the time. Thanks for joining us and we look forward to seeing you next time.